On the 1st of November 2016, I was in Darwin, Northern Territory, Australia. I'd been there for a month living in a hotel, making time lapses of thunderstorms. It was part of a project I called Hector the Convector Time Lapse and Modeling Experiment, or Heck Time for short. The aim of this still ongoing project is to compare thunderstorm time lapses with three dimensional output from weather model simulations. There are a bunch of other videos here with more information if you're interested in finding out more about this project. But uh, I would suggest the Comparing Storm Time Lapses with Simulations video. My daily routine usually consisted of taking it pretty easy in the morning, and then cycling down to Nightcliffe, a peaceful suburb with a view across the Beagle Gulf to the north, to time lapse a developing afternoon thunderstorm over the Tiwi Islands. In November, usually as the islands heat up, they trigger an intense thunderstorm complex, and it's so reliable in the afternoons that it has a name. Hector the Convector. However, the 1st of November 2016 was a bit different. It didn't look like a good day for Hector at all. The weather model showed that the convective energy was unusually low over the Tiwi Islands, and to my eyes, it looked unlikely that a Hector would develop at all during the afternoon. Looking inland from Darwin, things looked better, and by lunchtime, big thunderstorms were developing. So I started time-lapsing looking inland. Now, what happens often with the thunderstorms around Darwin is that they blow up and then they rain out, generating a cold pool of air that spreads out for, from the original thunderstorms. And these are outflow boundaries that can spread for hundreds of kilometers. The large storms that had blown up inland had developed these outflow boundaries, and there was one boundary in particular visible as a distinct line of cumulus, and was heading rapidly towards Darwin. I started to wonder what's going to happen when that outflow boundary reaches the Tiwi Islands. It looked as though it would be late afternoon when it did, and that's when the air over the island should be at its peak energy. If an outflow boundary was going to trigger a hectar thunderstorm over the Tiwi Islands, this is something I really didn't want to miss. So, I in a rush jumped onto my bike and cycled down to my favorite time-lapse location in Nightcliff. I set up my broad view camera and pointed it towards the Tiwi Islands that were just out of view beyond the horizon and that showed the outflow boundary progressing across the Beagle Gulf. At this point I was beginning to doubt I would see anything and that I'd wasted half a day on a wild goose chase. But then, as the daylight was dimming, the outflow boundary clashed with the air over the Tiwi Islands and convection began to burst out first over Melville Island and then at the north coast of the Tiwi Islands. The plumes shot up and made it to the tropopause. <laughs> 